What's going on, people? This is Jerry Travis Smith with you. And as a handicapped person, I went looking for a string trimmer that would save my legs, my back, and my messed up shoulder from the stresses of a traditional string trimmer. What I found was the DR Trimmer Mower Premier with a 6.75 horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine. Did it work out for me? Keep watching to find out. In this video, my goal is to give you plenty of information about the DR Trimmer Mower Premier so you can decide if it's the right choice for you. Some of the things I want to talk about include the specs, usage tips, as well as the plentiful amount of video footage I have of me using the machine. Before I start talking about the trimmer mower itself, I want to give you some background information about me. I have cerebral palsy and it mainly affects my balance in my legs. I'm really prone to trip and fall even on level ground. It just happens. My friends and family have watched it my entire life. You'll get to see some of those trips and falls in this very video. Also, I have a bad shoulder that's been bothering me for a couple of years. So it hurts and it's kind of weak. And I think the reason that it's so bad is I've used it to cushion myself when I fall over the years. So it's just worn out. In the last year, especially, my back has also been a problem so that if I put any mild strain on it or I twist the wrong way, it goes out on me. If you add all these things up, there's no wonder I can no longer use a traditional string trimmer. On top of that, I am overweight. That's something I'm working on, but it's going slow and I've had setbacks. Until I get all that fixed, I'm going to try to use this DR trimmer mower in an attempt to gain back some of my independence. Around here, finding somebody reliable that I trust to do the trimming, even if I'm paying them, is very difficult. So without further ado, let's get into the trimmer mower itself. The DR Trimmer Mower Premier has a 6.75 horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine. Supposedly, it requires no oil changes per the manual. You're supposed to just check the oil and add as needed. Note that when you check the oil, you're supposed to put a block underneath the trimmer head to keep it level. I'm not going to lie to you, I didn't do that, but I think the amount of oil I put in, which is 15 ounces, it was fine. That's also what the manual calls for. The engine speed is listed at 3,500 RPMs. The cutting width is 22 inches. There's five cutting heights ranging from an inch and a half to three and a half inches. The cutting speed is 3,800 RPM. The unit ships with two types of cord. There's a green cord that's 0.155 inches and a blue cord that is 1.75 inches. If you're going to cut your own cord, you should cut them at 25 inches long, which is what I did. Now let's get on with the first start of the DR Trimmer Mower Premier, and then we will see it in action. So according to the manual, we put it on our rabbit here. And then it says one to two pulls, and we got to make sure this uh, shutoff bar is pulled in. So let's see how I can do. This is not my bad shoulder, but I am left-handed, so it's still weaker nonetheless. So let's see what happens. That appears to have worked. First yank. So. So this kill bar does not shut off the engine. All that does is control the trimmer part and let the engine keep running. So let me demonstrate. I wonder if I can actually fire it up without having the uh, trimmer engaged. I haven't tried that, let's see. And if you take it all the way to turtle, it shuts the unit off. This is a piece of property that we don't actually live at anymore, but we keep it because it has high-speed internet access and it was paid for, so there wasn't any reason to not keep it around when we need high-speed internet access sometimes. So as you can see, there's some parts of it that 
we can't really mow with a mower the first being this area you're seeing here we use this as a parking space and um, we put big gravels on it the big I don't know what you call them I guess number two gravels and they uh, get caught up in a regular lawnmower so we're gonna try to uh, use the trimmer mower and see how it does and remember I am a handicapped person with cerebral palsy and with a bad back and a bad shoulder so uh, if I can manage to weed eat this area then you know that this is a pretty good product so let's see how it goes actually we don't need the bar pulled to get it started I began mowing in rows and columns just like you would with a traditional push mower. But I soon figured out that's not really the best way to deal with grass that is at least this tall. I think it would be okay if the grass weren't that tall, but unfortunately in this case it is. What you'll see is I eventually will adopt the vacuum cleaner approach, which is what the manual calls it, where you move in and out just like you would with a vacuum cleaner. You can see as I came back up the row, I was having trouble getting it to cut very well because the trimmer head was getting hung on the grass that was already cut. It was just enough drag to slow it down. Now I did have it on the lowest trimmer setting at this point of an inch and a half. So again, the rows and columns method just does not work for tall grass. Here you can see I started using the vacuum motion back and forth, back and forth. And you'll notice as I go along, like later on in the video, that I start doing that motion more exaggerated to the point where I move the wheels to a certain location and then work in a semicircle, just doing the back and forth vacuum motion. And that works a lot better. I found that's the best way to use this product unless the grass isn't really, really tall. If you listen to the mower right here, you can tell that the belt is already starting to slip. It sounds like a th -th 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 noise as the mower is doing its thing. This is normal per the manual, and all I would have had to done at this point is adjust the hex nut. 
but right now it's not so bad that the mower won't cut it's just not really efficient Here comes more vacuum cleaner motion, and I remember thinking to myself, seems to work a little better this way, but I was worried that it wasn't normal that it wasn't working in rows and columns, but if I would have read the stupid manual, I would have seen that I should have been doing that all along.
The belt rattle was getting really bad at this point, and I was starting to get a little nervous. I went inside and took a break, and I guess the heat of the sun really stretched it out, or possibly just the heat of the engine without movement.
Well, it would appear the belt has stretched or come loose or something. I don't think it's totally loose because it still spins, but it thumps and thwacks and has no power, so that doesn't bode well. We'll see what happens. At the end of day one, I could have avoided the entire bit of frustration if I would have just read the manual like I should have before I started doing anything. After a couple hours or thereabouts, you're supposed to adjust the belt tension using a very simple procedure you're about to see. To restore power to the trimmer head is very simple. If you're standing behind the mower, look on the left side of the handlebar. There is a hex-shaped assembly with some cables running to it. If you turn it clockwise, it will tighten the belt. And I'm assuming that counterclockwise will loosen the belt. So I got the adjustment done to the hex nut and the start of day two was very promising. As you can see, it's cutting very efficiently and I'm really happy at this point. I think that the belt had been slipping a lot sooner than I even realized on day one. Here comes my first good trip on camera. Nice save if I do say so myself. So I get real super excited right here because I'm going after this big vegetation, whatever these weeds are, but my line breaks. And you can tell I'm a bit disappointed. All right, so the stuff I had in there before is a smooth kind of trimmer string that came with it. It's green, but I'm going to replace that with this blue kind that is, um, it's got ridges on it. I don't know what you call it, but I'll show you how to replace that. It's really easy. There is different levels here. You see these holes. There's different levels. I want it as short as possible because I really don't care if I kill all that grass. So you just take it on the end and push it in like this. And if you do it right, it just pops right out. See there, I pushed it from this side and this side, both ends. Now you just grab them. Okay. And I'll do it again on the other side because you gotta do two pieces. So now, again, there's a little hole on the side. Push and get it started on one side. Push and get it started and on the other side. And if all goes well, it should just pop right out. line is definitely a little bit harder to push in but that's just because it's not smooth all right so let's see how the ridged trimmer line holds up compared to the smooth green
broke another piece of string. <laughs> So we're on day three of the DR trimmer mower 6.75 Premier test and review. I've decided to try out some of this trimmer line instead of the stuff that it came with. So uh, this is Shakespeare Ballistic 0.155 inch diameter. Paid about 15 bucks for it at Tractor Supply and that's for 90 yards. So. I've cut me some strips here, 26 inches, and you can see the difference in the two trimmer lines. They're about the same diameter, I think, but the Shakespeare has a triangular shape, whereas this blue one was twisted, and if you remember, the green was uh, solid. So, and not twisted or anything. It was just basically like a long cylinder. So we'll see how that works out. As you're about to see, the new trimmer line does a lot better than the other line that I tried. It did better than the blue and a lot better than the green. It also doesn't hurt that I am using the vacuum motion pretty much all the time now. And that, combined with the new line, made the experience a lot better from this point forward. At this point, my ankle is really starting to bother me. I creeled it on some of the big gravels, and I also stepped in a crawdad hole, because we have crawdads that burrow up through the ground. And between those two things, my ankle was starting to really hurt.
there are two big stumps that used to be there anyway hidden in that vegetation that you're looking at and I'm about to take the DR trimmer and go over there and see how it does up against those and there's a couple big holes left by the trunks that I may get a wheel rammed into I don't know it's been a while since we've looked under there to see how much of the stumps are left so this is a test of uh, yet some more uneven type ground but there are no big rocks over there, so hopefully I don't curl my ankle, but we'll find out.
So now I'm going to try it out by the garbage can, which is what you see on the right there, with the huge tall grass that's growed up over the can. And then the mailbox is to the left. And you can see I've always had trouble mowing up against it. And the problem with this area is that there is a ditch down below both. So let's see how I can manage that. It may not work out, it might work out, I don't know. Let's try it. Well, at this point, my ankle was done, but I wasn't, so I came in the house and wrapped it up with an ace bandage. I was bound and determined to show you guys that I trimmed next to the trash and the mailbox, and I wanted a good representation of how it performed on a slight incline. But, as you can see, that's not really how it worked out. Despite my best efforts, it just wasn't meant to be for me to finish mowing next to the trash can and the mailbox. I had to text my son, Chase, who's 13, to come out into the yard and help me get to the porch where I could get my shoe and the ace bandage off and check out my ankle. It was fine, some mild swelling, a little bit of bruising, and that's it. <laughs> I'm not going to say that Chase was happy that my ankle went out but he definitely wanted to try out the trimmer mower himself. So, once he got me to the porch, he took the trimmer mower, mowed next to the trash can, to the mailbox, and the water meter, which you haven't seen, as well as some other places around the property. He had no trouble whatsoever. He said it was quite easy. So, for an able-bodied person, this thing would definitely get the job done, even on slight inclines. I don't know how it would do on really steep hills, I don't think very well, but I can't speak to it directly. It's just a hunch at this point. So what's my final verdict on the DR Trimmer Mower Premier? I will give it a big thumbs up. 
With that being said, it's not a magical device. There is a learning curve to it. And I do believe an experienced person with a traditional string trimmer can outdo this thing both in efficiency as well as the uniformity of the cut. But for somebody like me and possibly others, it's more important that I can do some of this stuff on my own and not have to rely on somebody else than it is for it to be the absolute most efficient solution. I'm perfectly fine with it. If you enjoyed this video guys, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I don't really post a lot of lawn mowing things. This will probably be the only thing on here, but who knows? I do post a lot of random stuff that I'm into. So give me a subscribe and that way others can find my content and maybe help them make decisions on things to buy and things to do. You guys have a great day and I'll catch you later.